So after Mendel did a monohybrid cross, the next kind of experiment he did is a dihybrid cross. And a dihybrid cross is a mating of individuals that differ by two traits. All right, and so this is looking at what Mendel looked at with a dihybrid cross. So he took a seed that was uh, yellow and round and he crossed it with a seed that was green and wrinkled. All right, so we're using Y for the dominant allele of yellow, little y for the recessive green, capital R for round, and little r for wrinkled. Now, in his P generation, he always started off with 100% uh, with true breeders, all right? And so when you look at the gametes, we have two letters now in the gametes because there are two traits. So, all right, so capital Y for one trait, capital R for the second trait. Little Y for one trait, right, green, little r uh, for the wrinkled trait. But when you get these together, what he saw in his F1 generation was that they were all yellow and round. Okay, so, but they are heterozygous for those traits. And so, what he thought while this was growing, he thought there are two possibilities. One possibility is that the dominant traits stayed together and the recessive traits stayed together. All right, and so what you would get out of that is a three to one ratio. Or he thought there could be all different possibilities uh, in the offspring. Some that are yellow and round, some that are yellow and wrinkled, some that are green and round, and some that are green and wrinkled. All right? So he had these two possibilities in his mind, and what he got was this over here. And as you can see, his phenotypic ratio out of this was a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. All right? Now, go to the video where I talk about uh, dihybrid crosses. All right? So, when he got this phenotypic ratio, he had to think about how this could occur. And he came up with what is known as a principle of independent assortment. And it says that during gametic formation, members of one pair of genes separate independently of members of another pair of genes so that all combinations of genes occur in the gametes. So members of one pair of genes, so the yellow versus green, uh, the seed color, all right, uh, are going to separate independently of them members of another pair of genes. So seed shape, round or wrinkled, all right? So that's what this principle of independent assortment says. So the gene for seed color and the gene for seed shape are not bound together, all right? So if you inherit one, you don't inherit the other, all right? So they're inherited independently of each other. And the reason that they're inherited independently of each other, we now know uh, today, Mendel didn't know this back then, but the reason that they're inherited independently uh, is because they're found on separate chromosomes. Because they're on separate chromosomes, they get inherited independently of each other. If they were found on the same chromosome, they would get inherited together. But uh, fortunately for Mendel, these traits were not on the same chromosome. All right? So, after Mendel, about 1902, uh, people start taking ideas of genetics with meiosis that had been discovered in chromosomes. And they came up with what is known as a chromosomal theory of inheritance. And what the chromosomal theory of inheritance states is that the genes are found on the chromosomes. And this is by Theodore Bouveri and Walter Sutton in 1902. So Bouveri was French and Sutton was an American. They came up with this idea independently of each other, uh, but around the same time, so they're both given credit for it. Now, what they said is that Mendel's principles uh, explain the chromosomal movements during meiosis. Now, one of the things that uh, Mendel kind of got lucky on is that these traits of his were not linked, all right? So what I mean by linked is that linked genes are genes that are on the same chromosome. And because they're found on the same chromosome, they are inherited together, is what we see here. So if you get the big P, you're gonna get the big L. If you get the little P, you get the little L, all right? And so what happens at, uh, in a linked genes situation is you get this three to one ratio that occurs as opposed to that nine to three to three to one, 
okay? And that's because the uh, big P gene and the big L gene are on the same chromosome, they're inherited together. So if you get one, you get the other. And I'm just gonna tell you, a lot of our genes are this way. We have 21,000 genes spread out over 23 chromosomes. So, you know, you think about that, it's about 800 genes per chromosome, all right? So if you get one gene from your parents, you're gonna get, I don't know, like 800 more along with it, all right? So a lot of our genes are linked together. Now, let's take a look at some non-Mendelian genetics. So in Mendelian genetics, what we have is you have simple dominance. So you had two alleles for a trait, and one allele was dominant to the other one. So here we're looking at things outside of that. Linked genes are actually one of those. Here is another example, and this is what is known as lethal alleles. A lethal allele is where the alleles in the homozygous form halt development. All right, and this is generally seen with dominant alleles. So if you have two dominant alleles that are lethal, the offspring doesn't develop properly, dies in development, all right? So a couple examples of this, uh, one is the Mexican hairless dog, and another is a trait that this guy has, and that is a chondroplasia. A chondroplasia is a form of dwarfism and where the torso and the head are normal size, but the arms and legs are shortened. Sometimes the forehead can be a little larger. So, uh, you know, uh, Peter Dinklage, who paid, played Tyrion Lannister in Game of Thrones, he has a kind of replacia, all right? So what we see here is if somebody who has kind of replacia has children with somebody who does not, they have a 50-50 chance of having somebody who has a kind of replacia or doesn't have a kind of replacia, all right? But if two people with a kind of replacia have children together, well, a quarter of their uh, fertilizations will result in that lethal combination of two alleles and this will not allow the offspring to develop. 50% of that will be of an individual who uh, has a chondroplasia, and then a quarter of them, uh, of their offspring, uh, will not have a chondroplasia. All right, let's look at lethal alleles. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, multiple alleles. Multiple alleles is where one gene has several possible alleles, all right, in the population. So each individual, though, only gets two, even though the population may have many. And this is showing it uh, an example here uh, with the ABO blood group. In the ABO blood group, there are actually three alleles. There's the A allele, there is the B allele, and then there is the O allele. So the A allele is dominant to the O allele, and the B allele is dominant to the O allele. But the A allele and the B allele are what we call codominant. So codominance is an inheritance pattern in which both alleles are fully expressed. And that's what we see right here. This individual uh, has type AB blood and they express both of those alleles, right? So to be type A, you can either be, uh, have two uh, alleles for A or one allele for A and one allele for O. To be type B, you can either have two alleles for B or one allele for B and one allele for O. To be AB, you have to have one of each. And to be type O, you have to have both of those recessive alleles.